Welcome to the Las Vegas Home Show. This is episode number three. I'm your host, David Carroll with Signature Real Estate Group and my co-host today. Hi, I'm Jenna Levecchio, mortgage lender with RCG Home Loans. And welcome back to the show, Jenna. So we got a few questions. Today in the Las Vegas Home Show, we're gonna do the week in review, kind of me and Jenna are gonna talk about a little bit about what's going on, a little bit about our, our personal life. Now we're gonna jump into the mortgages with Jenna. She's gonna be talking, what are you gonna be talking about today? Today we're talking about condos and credit. Condos and credit. What you got to do to get prepared to get condo financing. Then after that, we're going to jump into my favorite, the new home spotlight. And then we're going to go into hidden gems. I found a few hidden gems out there. And at the end of the show, what are we going to do at the end of the show? What's next? What's next for the Las Vegas Home Show? So let's go ahead and jump into the questions. Everybody, I came prepared. The first question I have is, Jenna, how was your week? What's going on with you? I had an amazing week. I had a loan close, a buyer, first time home buyer get into their house. So that's always exciting. Love it. And then I had family in town that I hadn't seen since I was 15. So that was really, really cool. Oh, nice. After the EDC weekend, you had some family coming to town. Yeah. That's nice. So you kind of get to decompress with family. That's probably the best way to... For sure. Yeah, how was your week? No, I had a good week too. This week I spent some time out in Cadence doing some home shopping with some clients and then we were out in Summerlin. I think this week we were looking at a lot of townhomes, Mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because I've been noticing the condo resales have been shooting up in the market. Have you noticed that at all? I've I've just noticed a lot of people buying condos and I've been closing a lot more condos. So a lot more applications for condos out there. And we'll talk about that later in the show. So that's a little bit about how my week was going. We were out there in Summerlin and Cadence looking for new homes. I've got two buyers actually looking for a single stories, three bedroom, two bath in the Northwest, kind of around that 600 price range, which is kind of difficult. Have you noticed that prices have gone up here oh, yeah. in Las Vegas? Yeah. You know, what was once 600,000 or what was once 300,000 is now almost 600,000. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a di- different buying experience out there, but call me. I'll definitely uh, guide you in the right direction. So Jenna, the first question I got here is, What was your dream job as a kid? So I wanted to be a couple different things as I was growing up. But when I was really young, I wanted to be like a pop star, like like a star. (laughs) You are a star. (laughs) Then then I wanted to be a teacher. Um, And then as I got a little bit older, I wanted to be a vet because I love animals. I love, you know, the vet really touches my heart because recently I've been wanting to get a puppy. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about getting like a Labrador mix, maybe a rescue. And after that last video, the fanfare came out. All of y'all definitely said I should go to the rescue to find a little puppy. So I'm excited. Maybe we'll have a puppy on the next show. Uh, The puppy should be our next guest. Well, we'll have to see about it and what's next for the next episode. That's for sure. What do you want to be when you were growing up? Yeah, you know, as a kid, I think the first couple jobs I wanted to be was I wanted to be a pilot kind of take after my dad. He was in the Air Force. And then I also wanted to be a firefighter. Uh-huh. Those kind of come up all the time, right? That was about 10 or 11. Yeah. I think by the time I got to, ad- you know, 16, 17 years old, I wanted to get into automotive. But it kind of led me into hospitality, uh, managing restaurants, and, and the hotel business, which I think really plays a role in my life today. You know, always helping others. I've always been out there to help others. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, that's cool. All right, Jenna, I got another question for you. If you could tell your past self one thing, what would it be? And and to add to that, would you change anything about the past? So I wouldn't change anything. I think that everything happens for a reason. And um, and it's got me to where I am today, which I'm really happy and thankful about. But if I could tell myself one thing, it would just be don't worry and trust the process. I used to get, especially when I was younger, I would spend so much time being stressed and trust the worrying process. about everything. And it always works out and usually better than I ever, ever expected. There's always a bigger plan at play. So I would just not worry so much and trust the process. I love that. No time to worry, right? Yeah. What about you? Would you go back in time and change anything or what's Yeah, you know. If I could tell my past self one thing, I would probably say just don't take life so seriously. You know, it wouldn't change anything about like my work ethics or my passion and my drive. But just don't, you know, relax a little bit. That's what I would say. Yeah. Now, we got another one. Tell me a piece of advice that you've received that made a difference in your life. Sometimes like cheesy, but believe in yourself no matter what. And that's gotten me really, really far in life. Just believing in myself and the vision that I have and what I know I can do. Definitely got to believe in yourself. It's really, you know, at the end of the day, you can have, I was watching something last night about how you can have friends all around you, but if you're lonely inside, you're going to be lonely out there too. Mm -hmm. So it's all about having that personal happiness within. So it kind of ties into that for sure. Definitely. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever got? Yeah, I guess there was probably two. One was when I was about 16 years old working on the the line on a 24-hour restaurant. I was called the Nacho Man, believe it or not. 
I made some amazing nachos. But the piece of advice I got was from one of the cooks. He said, you know, David, don't think too much. And it stuck with me from when I was, that was 30 years ago. Oh, wow. 30s, I'm 46 now. So 30 years ago, that stuck with me. And what it made me think today is that it's all about meditation mm -hmm. and being happy inside. Because mm -hmm. if you're not happy within, you can't be happy without. No, that's the uh, biggest thing. As within, as without, you know, be, do, have. There's a lot of things that I instill in my life for sure. All right, Jenna, I got another question. How do you balance your personal life with your career? Um, so I used to be really bad at balancing it, and I just had a tendency to focus only on my career and let everything else kind of slip on the back burner. But I've gotten a lot better at now prioritizing self-care, prioritizing my joy, my happiness, my peace, and what's really important to me in my heart, and then everything else has fallen into place. Very cool. Mm -hmm. What about you? How do you prioritize everything? Yeah, you know, so the question is how do you balance your personal life and your work life, right? What I've learned is it's all one life for me. I, I'm really passionate about what I do. So every day when I wake up, it's not about what do I need to do for the day. I just go out and do what I, I need to do, who yeah, I am. Yeah, but, I know. relate to that. That's how I feel too. Yeah, definitely. And like, the, I don't know. I mean, do I take enough, enough vacations? Probably not. But I, I'll tell you what, my daughter, I haven't told her yet, but we're going to be going to Laughlin in about three weeks when I get my new performance model three. And that's kind of my outlet to the world. It's like a little mini Vegas out there. Take my laptop, sit out on the balcony mm -hmm. and just enjoy life. A little getaway. Yep. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and jump onto the iPad, Jenna. Let's go ahead and pull it up here. Now, what do we have here? Tell me what we see. A menu from EDC. I pulled this up because I know you just went to EDC for the three-day weekend, which is uh, pretty amazing out there. But I saw this. Some of the prices are just outrageous. What is going on here? Is this just for alcohol or what is going on with the That prices? is just for alcohol. And those are in the more expensive areas. So like VIP and some of the just more private areas, it gets really expensive. But um, like I just drink water. I don't drink alcohol. And it was like $5 a bottle. So that's Five not bucks too a bad. Pop. It's not bad. But I tell you what, what a racket. I mean, who was making <laughs> millions out there like... You should have called me. I had a couple of cases. <laughs> Anyhow, let's jump on to the next one. And then, as you know it, right after EDC, EDC ends, they're already selling tickets. Yeah, I actually um, got mine when I was driving here. That is that is too <laughs> cool. Tell me, what did it cost for the EDC tickets for next year? So it's just a five dollar deposit, and then it comes to be like five hundred dollars. About five. Is that for all three days? Mm -hmm. so you're gonna do it again. You yeah. you enjoyed the three days this week. Oh yeah, I loved it. That's awesome. Let's jump on the next one. And then here is Jenna out there in EDC. I really love this pe this picture here. She's wearing her baggy pants, her tank top. She's loving life out there with her shades on. This was probably, what day was this on? Day three. Day three. Mm -hmm. So you can tell she's got her shades on at the end of day three, a lot of <laughs> long nights. You stayed out there. How late did you stay out there? We actually stayed until sunrise each of the days. And I, I didn't think that I would make it just because I don't go out a whole lot usually. But we, wow. yeah, we did. We no, did I love it. it. Let's jump on the next. I love that. Uh, the ride too. Yeah, Very cool. the fair as well. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And here's Jenna in her shorts. What day was this on? That was the first day. So this was at sunrise or sunset. At, at sunset. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So it looks like they were just kicking off out there. Yeah. It looks hot too. Was it hot out there? It was. It was. At night though, it felt perfect, but it was pretty warm, especially during the day. Yeah. You know, before while we're here, let's go ahead and jump right into the iPad. I want to show you guys our Instagrams real quick, and I want to say thank you to to all of you that reached out last week. I got a few DMs out there, and it's really amazing. So definitely go over to my Instagram, leave me a follow, send me a DM. DM. I'd love to hear from you for sure. And then here's Jenna's as well, and she's got her her new EDC photo. And what is that a picture of there? That was a flower. Uh, is that like a rose there? Yeah. It's a reel, so that's just like the cover on it. Oh, on the reel. Got yeah. it. So it was a video. 115 hearts. Pretty pretty awesome. But go give Jenna a follow. She's got 1,213 followers right now. I'm going to check next week on episode four and see how many we got. So let's, let's go ahead and jump back on the iPad. Now this next... I got this off X. This is Las Vegas locally. Always covering a lot of uh, great Las Vegas information. But the Speedway's giving away thousands of dollars worth of trees. Did you know they were selling or giving away the palm trees? No, I didn't, but that's really cool. Yeah, so they have all the palm trees there, and then you can just come by the racetrack after the show, after EDC, and uh, come pick up some free palm trees. I tell you what, it's a pretty good deal. Let's go on the next one. This is over in downtown. What do you call this, Jenna? Fremont Street Experience. The Fremont Experience. It's really awesome. And downtown is, you know, a, a nice little local spot to go to. It's a little more uh, down to earth, and you got the Fremont Experience. It's really great. One of my favorites is the Golden Nugget out there. Do you have a favorite casino in Fremont? I like um, Circa now. Oh, Circa. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there yet. And you know what that reminded me of? It, the California Hotel. Have you heard of that hotel? Yeah. It's an older hotel. They used to have this 1999 steak dinner downstairs. Oh, my God. Let's go ahead and jump onto the next slide. 
Now, this is the sphere. So one thing they're doing for the Las Vegas students is the winning designs get to d- debut on July 4th. So it's very cool. The sphere out there is a, an amazing. Have you been to the sphere? Not inside, but I've driven by outside, and I always check it out when I'm driving by or I can see it. I'm with it's you. It's so cool. Yeah, I've been wanting to stop by, too. I just haven't made it. I know it's... Now, on this next slide, this is from Historic Vids, 1984 shot of the Las Vegas Strip. I just love the memorabilia here in Las Vegas. What do you think, Jenna? Yeah, it's so cool. It looks so classic back then. And what does that say? Does that say Sammy on one of those signs? Yeah. So you got the Frontier, Riviera, Sahara. A lot of these casinos are not there anymore. No. I think the Fashion Show Mall still there. It has that UFO sitting out front. It's pretty wild. Let's jump on to the next one. Now... As you guys know, Las Vegas is the mecca. We got another $70 million indoor sports family entertainment complex coming to Henderson, and we love it. Let's jump on to the next one. Vegas, I don't know if the prices are ever coming down. Is there so many people moving here? So much energy coming into the city. It's really, and wow, what do we have? Local scorpions. (laughs) Tell me about this. What are we looking at? So that's the sphere that we were just talking about, and because we're starting to have the scorpions all come up because it's almost summer. I tell you what, I was spraying for bugs again last week. After the show, after we talked about the scorpions, yeah. I just wanted to make a quick round just in case. I haven't seen any bugs. And good. So we're Me good. Me neither. Yeah. Thank God. And another one from Las Vegas locally, the moon showing off again. This is right over the stratosphere. Isn't that amazing? It's so beautiful. You know, I love my, my moon rises and the, I don't really know if I see the moon set too much, but I definitely see the rises. Let's jump on the next one. Now, a little bit about the weekend review. I was out in Lake Las Vegas again this week as well. This is right behind Del Webb 55 plus community. It's such a gorge. You know, from this picture, it doesn't look too deep, but I tell you what, it definitely is pretty deep down there. Oh. And let's jump on the next one. I'm, I'm going to show you looking out to the south here in Lake Las Vegas. So you got Lake Mead, you got Lake Las Vegas, and just a beautiful community. You're close to the mountains, real low elevation. So about uh, 11, 1200 feet above sea level out there. So pretty. It's beautiful. Now, what do we have here, Jenna? So I forgot about this until you showed me it, but you're supposed to turn your fans um, when it switches over to summer. Yep, so in the summertime, you want to go counterclockwise, right, to pull the cool air down. Yeah. But then in the wintertime, you want to reverse it, so you kind of mix in that air. It's funny, because every year I think about this, and I'm like, should I switch my fan? And I'm like, which way does it go? Yeah. So now you know, everybody, make sure you get that fan switch. Let's jump on the next one. And we are coming up on Memorial Day here. And I just want to say give thanks to everybody and uh, all the fallen soldiers, you know. We're here with you. I can feel you inside. And I uh, just want to say everyone be safe out there. Jenna, do you have anything to say? Happy Memorial Day. Yep, have get a out good there. Weekend. Get out there, have fun with your family, friends, have some drinks, have a good time and celebrate. And So now we're going to get into f- the five facts about Las Vegas. And it also talks about the Hoover Dam's impact. The construction of the Hoover Dam in the 1930s had significant effect on Las Vegas, bringing in all the workers and boosting the economy. Mm -hmm. And I have to imagine that era must have been wild. This was around the silver boom as well. And I want to say they were come... They would work on the Hoover Dam, and what were they gambling at night? What Probably, do you think? Yeah. I'll tell you what, Las Vegas is a great city. Now, with that being said, what do we got next? The legalization of gambling in Nevada in 1931 was a transformative event for Las Vegas, leading to its development as a major resort city. And there it goes right there. So the Hoover Dam employees came in in the 1930s, the gambling took off, mm-hmm. and the rest is history. So next we have organized crime. Tell us a little about Jenna. In the mid-20th century, Las Vegas had ties to organized crime, which played a role in the development of the casino industry. The mob. The mob was running the city? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. (laughs) Didn't you tell me a while back that you went to the mob museum? Yeah. Have you been there? I haven't been there. Tell Uh, me about it. They have a bunch of really interesting stuff back there and just like all the history and all the people that were around back then. It was a totally different era. And, you know, that Mm -hmm. brings up something that reminds me of when I was working in the casino industry. Because remember, I was working with a lot of day one employees out there. So what they would tell me is back in the day, people used to dress up and go out. Mm -hmm. It was an event to go onto the strip, not like flip flops and shorts anymore. like how it is now. Yeah, much different now. So back then, it was a lot more respect in the casinos. At least that's what I've been told. And what have we got last year? Established in 1996, the Neon Museum is a landmark dedicated to preserving and displaying iconic neon signs from Las Vegas' history. I really appreciate the Neon Museum. I haven't actually been there. Have you been there? I haven't, but it looks so cool. Yeah, I dr- I've, you know, I'm always driving around the city, so I have driven by there quite a few times, but you see all the old neon lights that maybe they've taken down. How do you call them when they 
take them out of service or what have you. Yeah, and then they have them all there. I've always loved neons, and like we both kind of love neons about how when we first moved to Vegas, it's all the lights. So mm -hmm. that's definitely something we love. And it says these facts highlight the dynamic changes and developments that shape the Las Vegas into the vibrant city it is today. And Viva Las Vegas. Let's jump on to the next one. And now we're going to get into mortgages with Jenna. Take it away, Jenna. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about two things. Uh, the first one being condos. I've had a lot of condos come up lately, people wanting to buy condos, and especially the one that... It's been busy out there for condos. Oh, so busy. It's the busiest I've ever seen it. And the one that we just closed had so many obstacles on it. So it's just interesting to know up front if you are looking to buy a condo, some of the things that can come up because not all condos can be financed. Some condos can only be financed with certain loan types. So it's definitely to expect all of those things and there might be some hurdles along the way. Tell us one obstacle about getting condo financing. So some one of the things that I'm seeing a lot lately is insurance um i think with premiums going up uh, hoas are kind of dropping like how much insurance they have in the community and it's sufficient for them but it's not sufficient for us on the loan side because fannie mae freddie mac fha they all require you have a certain amount of coverage so what's happening is they're dropping their coverage and now it's not enough for us but it's enough for them so they don't care but then we can't finance in the community that's definitely kind of, it's kind of sounds like a new issue that's popped up. I remember mm -hmm. some of the older issues were with like if you have over 50 certain certain percentage of investors in the community that you can't get qualified. Does that happen as well? Yes. And we're still seeing that. And then we're also seeing like um, with reserves, not having enough reserves. So. so next is for credit. I've had a lot of buyers come to me recently and. They think that their score isn't high enough to buy, and then when I pull it, it's actually a lot higher. Like, I had one nice. buyer just this week who was like, oh, my score's only like a 600, and it was, when I pulled it through, it was a 740. So I definitely recommend, yeah, what you're seeing on Credit Karma is not usually close to, like, what we pull on our end. So definitely have someone pull credit, have me pull your credit, do a soft check, and then see where it's at. And it might be even closer than you thought it was. And if it's not, then I can help you get it up to where you need it to be. So the, the question is, increase your credit score, right? So mm -hmm. if find out where your credit's at first, and then see if you need to increase it. And here's some, some tips to do that. Yeah. And you know, along with increasing your credit score, I think it's important to uh, increase your budget for like down payment. Mm -hmm. And now if you're in a well-qualified position, sometimes maybe you're, you're fine on that down payment, but maybe start saving some money for that backyard upgrade. You know, there's always something you can do to prepare to buy a home. Definitely. So what do we have on here, Jenna, for uh, increasing your score? So there's a few tips to increase your score. Make sure you pay your bills on time. Sign up for online banking and make sure your re regular reoccurring bills are paid automatically. Don't want to miss a payment. Yeah. Increase your credit limit. That's a great, great one because not a lot of people do this. It's mm -hmm. just because it takes too much time, right? It's like registering your appliances. Who wants to do it? Yeah. But if you go onto your credit cards, you can actually call them and get increases, correct? Yeah, and then your utilization will go lower because you have a higher available credit line. Yep. Don't apply for many cards at once. Smart. Yeah, opening too many accounts or having too many increases on there can, can hurt you. Don't ever close an open credit card account. That will remove all of its history. My, my problem is they close them on me when I don't uh, use them enough. Yeah. And then last one is check for errors on your credit part report. So if you do have Credit Karma or credit monitoring app like that, that is helpful for something Experian, like this. Yeah. Something like that. Because like say a collection pops up or something, it will n show you that. And then you, if it's not correct, you're able to start Absolutely. getting it off. And I think everyone should be on some type of a credit reporting just to monitor their credit. You yeah. never know when someone's trying to pull your credit and it can really alert you to a uh, fraud. So definitely be diligent out there for sure. For sure. And Jenna's already saying yeah. for sure. She sounded just like me. All right, now what do we got here, Jenna? Oh, so my personal thing for this week is cooking. I love cooking. I love food. Let's talk yeah. about it. Um, I, cooking is just like, I don't know. It, if I'm like stressed, I have a lot going on. It just puts me in a different mode. So I love it. What and are I some of your favorite food? You know what? Before I ask you about your favorite food, what yeah. is your number one favorite food? Oh, 
It's so hard to pick. I really can't, but probably Italian. I'm Italian, so. I know what mine is. It's pizza. It's pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely Italian, too. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, my mom used to cook a lot of lasagna. Do you eat lasagna? I actually can't because I'm allergic to ricotta cheese, which is, what like, crazy because I'm Italian. That's, like, yeah. the best part of it, too. I know. Maybe without ricotta. I guess it's yeah, not. Yeah, you can, though. Or, like, I know it sounds weird, but the people use cottage cheese, and it actually comes out, like, really the same. Nice. Now, I know you love cooking, and you do. Jenna does get out there and go to some amazing restaurants, which mm-hmm. I, I definitely appreciate. But tell me about what, what you cook at home. What type of meals? Um, so because I've been going out to eat so much lately, especially for business, I will cook healthy when I'm at home. So like grilled nice. chicken, just like steak, uh, chicken salad. I'm always trying new recipes of stuff, veggies. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> if like if I'm cooking, cooking, then when I was younger, I learned from my mom and my grandma how to make a sauce. So I'll make a big sauce, meatballs, nice. and then um, chicken cutlets or like eggplant parmesan. All right, pasta. you're making me hungry. What's for dinner? <laughs> All right, let's jump. So what do we got after this? Now we're going to jump into the market stats. All right, guys, I could not resist. <laughs> we got some market stats today. This is from Inf- InfoSparks, some MLS data. And as always, it's never guaranteed, but it is reliable. So we are looking at the single family homes. This is all construction types. And what I wanted to pull up was a one-year chart with the monthly indicators. So this is total homes on the market. Right now, we are sitting at 4,265 homes, negative 24% year over year. This is on single-family homes. Jump onto the next slide. Now the same slide, one year with monthly intervals for condos. Now look at the condos here, Jenna. What's going on? Oh, they're up. They are shooting up. up. And that's going to correlate exactly with what you're seeing on the pre- yeah, on the applications for exactly condos. that's exactly what I'm seeing. Yeah, and then jump on to the next one. This isn't as good. Oh, this wow. is our townhomes. They are down 507 townhomes, negative 20%. <laughs> so why am I talking about this? This is not the United States. This mm-hmm. is Las Vegas. We are a volatile market. Mm-hmm. And while other... Markets are going up in inventory. We are going down in inventory. Go to the next slide, Jenna. This is our median price. It keeps shooting up. We don't have a lot of inventory. We got a lot of people moving down here. 469000 for the median sales price. And that's not even the average. Going up. Yep. All right, now, everybody, we're going to go into the new home spotlight because you know I love new homes. Today, I want to feature some homes out in uh, Inspirata. So we're going to zoom in here. So you kind of have the Silverado uh, Valley, not too many new construction in this area, but then you get down, you have uh, Inspirata. So just to show you, you got um, Richmond American Homes, some nice two stories. You got Taylor Morrison Silverleaf. And then down here, you got KB Homes, quite a few communities. You also have TriPoint Homes, some condos, Toll Brothers. But this area is fantastic. It's really a great area for families. Got a lot of hiking and biking trails. And the whole thing about Inspirata the master plan is they kind of want to make it like family oriented so you can kind of cruise through there's really no gates you just kind of walk through the whole community a lot of beautiful parks out there and you know some of my favorites right now are kb homes out here you got quite a lot of product i want to say they're basically on phase two or phase three but they are building in this whole area oh those are cool looking we're going to jump right into hidden gems this is a new segment we're going to talk about and i favorited a couple i want to show you here we're going to be looking in the northwest and just to give you an idea I went ahead and just pulled up home 1,750 square feet or larger with a pool. So let's take a look and see what we found here. All right, so this first home I want to show you is Golden or Wana Way. Is that what it is? So 715,000, square feet. I want to pull it up. Well, I love the RV parking. You know, having extra features on your single-story home, and single stories are definitely one of the most desirable. All right, now here's the pool on this one. So on the hidden gems, I want to feature homes with a little bit extra features like the RV parking, the large lots, mm-hmm. and the pools. When was the last time you were at the pool, Jenna? I thought last, a week ago. Very cool. Last week, yeah. I, feel, I tell you what, last week I wanted to jump in the pool. It almost hit 100 degrees out yeah, there. Yeah, it's finally like pool season. <laughs> pool you know? season has arrived. So you have a beautiful home over here, and I wanted to show you one more. This is also here in the northwest of Las Vegas, kind of north of uh, the 215. But this one has the RV garage. Now, this is a beautiful little new home community. Just a few, I want to say about 20 home sites in this community. Hmm. But take a look. Oh, that's a cool backyard. Yeah, so someone bought this, and now they're selling it. One, one of the great options is you have this rear garage on yeah, the RV gate. Yeah, that's cool. Now, right now, it is kind of, it's a little bit more difficult to find these style homes on the new market, but you can definitely find them on the resale market. And one thing is you get a pool yeah equipped yeah right these, away it's perfect these are sitting <laughs> on one third acres oh i like the cabinets like 
The gray. They are stunning. I mean, this is the epitome of a dream home. The single story, you got the large lot, the pool, great area. I love it. All right, now I got one more. Again, this is in the Northwest. This is closer to the uh, 215, but definitely a hidden gem. So this one's 674, 990. Again, everybody, it's a little difficult to find these single stories out in the Northwest, but if you're looking, I'm going to help you find them. I'm looking all day long, and then Jenna will get you pre-approved. We're a great team here. We're going to make it happen. Let's take a look. The oh, first wow. thing I noticed was how bright yeah. this one is. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of white. Isn't that wild? I love the shutters, too, on the windows, and that fan is pretty high end. Yeah. Take a look at some That's of the other photos here. I would put plants in there and, like, liven it up. Yeah, it needs a little bit of greenery, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's a little it bit. It would look uh, really cool, I think, with a lot of plants, It's a little bit though. clean in there. I do want to back up, though, and take a look at the pool. Because this Ooh, is what we came for. That's cool. I know. the first. I kind of had the same reaction the first time I thought it. And then I was thinking, is that a P or is it a B? <laughs> I don't I'm know. Not sure. It's an interesting shape. Yeah, I, I love my pools. You know, and, and there's something to be said about a smaller pool that I really enjoy and that I feel comfortable with. Less chemicals, less maintenance. Man, go for a swim. All right, everybody. And that's going to wrap it up for episode three of the Las Vegas Home Show. Jenna, how do you think the show went today? I think it went amazing. It did go amazing, and we really do appreciate you guys. Definitely leave your feedback down below. Follow us on Instagram, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you, everybody.